Biology at the University of Manitoba, which means bugs. Now, who, who are these guys, actually? Uh, these are hissing cockroaches. They hiss. They do. Do they hiss? Are they, like... Yeah, they, they You're not going to pick it up on your microphone. I don't think these up. guys are pretty quiet. They're pretty quiet it's but cool in the room here now, so they, oh, so they, they quiet actually, Why do they hiss? It's probably a defensive mechanism. They don't want you know? people picking them up. Yeah, or other animals, more likely the predators and things. It would it would be a protective now, thing. I mean, they're they're big. I mean, they're, yeah. are they as big as you would get in a typical person's house? You wouldn't find the, these guys in Not these. No. no, these are from Madagascar. Okay. Uh, originally, and and they've adapted really nicely to sort of a laboratory environment. You hold these? Oh, sure. Yeah, Absolutely. Those, yeah, sure. Give those. Yeah. Watch the don't go up your sleeve. Don't go up my oh. sleeve. No. Okay, so these are our yellow. Come here, come here. Come here. There you okay, go. thank you. Yeah, thank you. These are yellow much. mealworms. Yellow mealworms. And uh, it this smells, is, by the way. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it does. Just a bit. Um, these guys feed on various kinds of stored grains. Why? Uh, that's what they eat. But I mean, why yeah. do you have a big? Oh, box why do we of, have these things? Well, like again, it's a live insects are really very appealing and we can use those, those to demonstrate are Those are maggots. No, no, these are, they, they're not really maggots because if you look at the front, they've got six little tiny legs. Maggots don't have any legs. Okay, well <laughs> next time I look at a maggot, I'll check. And these, and these larvae then develop into the adult beetles. Okay. Ultimately. And which again, are why, why do you have these here? They... Well, again, for educational purposes, we can show these to people. We can, in, in a classroom, for example, right. in, our, in our entomology classes, we talk about growth and development life cycles in insects. Right. And you can show people pictures in a book, you can show them images on a screen, but it doesn't have the lasting impact of being able to see the live insects and the stages, or even to keep them themselves and to rear them through and see all the different stages of the insects. It's, oh. it's a much more effective way of learning. Uh, gross is, is well, what some, some people Some say. people think so. Yeah. These guys tickle. Yeah, yeah. The, these actually make very good pets. They don't smell. Of, many cockroaches do produce really distinctive odors. This particular species does not. Thank goodness. Yeah. 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 So they, um, they're relatively quiet. They don't fly. If they escape, they will not survive. They, they, and they live for a very long time, more than a year. Oh. So it's not a bad pet. And it's a very easy species for us not to maintain. Not up the sleeve. No. Not <laughs> up the sleeve. And again, this is a, these insects have a different developmental cycle from these. And so we can, again, take these into a classroom, and when we're talking about incomplete metamorphosis, yeah. we can show students all the different stages. Okay. And they can get a much better appreciation of what these insects are doing. What got you interested in bugs? Oh, as opposed uh, to nuclear physics or I, uh, hockey or anything? Yeah, I started um, collecting insects when I was about five or six. Yeah? And uh, I had a small business where I sold insects. Yeah, to, really? Yeah. Yeah, and if you're going to have a business, you have to know your product. And you were so, sold, like you sold bugs? Yes, I did, yeah. To who? To the high school students that had to have a pla had to have collections in, in school, you see. Very clever. And it happened quite by accident initially, and then more and more people, they just started phoning home. Well, what kind, home what kind of bugs did you collect? Everything. Anything I could find. Ants, and wasps. Yeah, everything. The students had to have a certain type of insects for their you know, their collections, and those I focused on. But I also started rearing them, because you could get much nicer specimens. Gradually, more and more people started phoning the house, and uh, that's the business cool. grew. I had to take in a partner. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Yeah, it was yeah, it was really good, actually. And, and uh, again, like I say, you have to know your product if you're going to sell something. Know your bug, and I so always I went, say. Yeah, I went, well, to, the, went yeah. to the local library and harassed the library in there, Mr. Bursford, and uh, kept insisting they needed more more books on insects, more books. And uh, you, you had the bug for yeah, bugs. Yeah, absolutely. I had to say it. I yeah. had to say it. <laughs> Oh, that's great. Yeah, but it carried, and then my interest just carried on. And I actually, went, when I went to university, I went into agriculture mm -hmm. and had no idea at the time that you could specialize in entomology. But you can get into a faculty of agriculture, and at that time, there was a, it's just as here, right. there's, a, there's a, an entomology department, a, a program in entomology, and I just was in seventh heaven. I couldn't believe my good fortune. Oh. And when I found out you could actually make a living as an entomologist, well, yes. it was, I never looked back. Do you ever pull pranks on secretaries never, or other faculty never, members? Never, no, 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 we don't, no, no, we don't do anything like that here. Okay, good. Just to know that.